Tonight, moderate animal liberationists fight off the meat scare, bikey gang deaths in Sydney, and a frightening medical report on vaginal warts. Good evening, I'm Ken Hose. Welcome to News World. A member of a Sydney bikey gang is fighting for his life tonight after a bizarre motorcycle accident which claimed the lives of three men. When police arrived at Foreshore Road just before midnight, it was a horrifying scene. Three men lay dead. Another was seriously injured with head and internal injuries. It wasn't until late today police finally worked out how the accident happened. At least six members of the Black Ulands Club were riding down Foreshore Road. The bike of 22-year-old Brian Roberts clipped the back wheel of 31-year-old James Katunas. The machines tumbled end over end. Katunas was killed instantly. Roberts is seriously ill tonight in the Prince of Wales Hospital. Another gang member, 31-year-old Robert King, was travelling further ahead. He saw the accident and rushed back, riding on the wrong side of the road. Another motorbike rider, 28-year-old Victorian Leslie Miller, was on his way to work. As he reached the crash scene, the bikes of Miller and King collided head-on. Both men were killed instantly. First reports indicated the bikies had been racing, but members of the Black Ulan gang deny there was any stupidity. The bloke's bike just seized up and dragged him in the park for the other bike. They both got went down the hill. Now the bloke was killed going to get help. There was no drag, none of that bullshit. Most of these bikes are married men, they're not your bikes. That's all we want straight now, right? The Black Ulans are named after an American bird of prey. Their club wake is likely to continue all weekend. Hot on the heels of yesterday's meat poisoning hoax, two of Brisbane's legitimate animal charity groups banded together tonight to show they can make their point peacefully. Tonight, the fundraising event focused on fashion with compassion. The message that fashion and beauty can be achieved without causing animals to suffer. The models in this parade are wearing makeup which has not been tested on animals. But the focus of the night was a selection of fake furs, indicating that glamorous look can be achieved without bloodshed and at a fraction of the cost. However, there was one real mink coat, made from 40 pelts and modelled by Morticia. Parade organiser Barbara Cook believes yesterday's meat poisoning hoax, made by a group calling themselves the Animal Rights Militia, was very damaging to animal charity groups. Indeed, she believes the perpetrators of the hoax may have been intent on detracting from the public image of legitimate organisations. We don't know who they are. They're not a recognised animal group. And we had a few phone calls today to check out whether we were them, as if we'd possibly be associated with something like that. Victorian rail officials are investigating the cause of a major train derailment near Wangaratta late this afternoon. The derailment is expected to affect passenger train services between Melbourne and Sydney throughout the weekend. The goods train was travelling between Wodonga and Wangaratta near Springhurst when about 10 wagons overturned. Although the spectacular accident caused no injuries, it left freight scattered along the track. V-Line officials were quickly at the scene and discovered that about two kilometres of track was badly damaged. According to a V-Line spokesman, repairs are unlikely to be completed until later this weekend. But passengers won't be stranded. Travellers on today's intercapital daylight from Sydney were taken by bus from Albury to Melbourne. Buses were also arranged for Sydney-bound passengers travelling on tonight's Spirit of Progress and Southern Aurora. Two Brisbane power stations were shut down today on the eve of new electricity increases. And while the government says it's doing everything it can to keep costs down, Seven News has found evidence of multi-million dollar waste at the power plants. Critics say the government has vastly overestimated the demand for electricity in Queensland. They say older stations are being shut down, even though they're still perfectly good, so that expensive new stations like Tarong don't look like a waste of money. We now find we've got a situation where we've got uh, generating capacity running out of our ears and it's cost, been a huge cost to electricity consumers, particularly domestic consumers. Mr Vaughan expects that Swan Bank A and B will be the next to go, a claim the government denies. But today the government did shut down Bilimba and part of Tennyson. Yet, as we found out, millions of dollars have recently been spent there to keep them going. Authorities refused to let us inside, but angry workers pointed out the waste. Does they want to what, build one of those super duper modern ones up at uh, Stanwell. They got and no Tarong. use, <laughs> and Tarong. They got no use for the power, mate. None whatsoever. It's just a big joke. 
This place here is just in perfect running order and they're shutting it down. They say that $11 million was spent up to 1983 employing five private contracting teams to completely overhaul the boilers, generators, economiser lines and to install other equipment. They said it would go till uh, the end of the century. Worse, these men say similar work was done at the other obsolete stations, Collinsville and Tennyson. $120 million, they claim, just wasted. All up, Queensland's electricity system is in debt to the tune of $3 billion, money borrowed to pay for power stations that are no longer being used. And that's why here in Queensland we have Australia's highest electricity bills. Thanks, Paul. Paul Smith there. The federal government is applying pressure to Queensland to stop... ...just as the search for the crocodile believed to have killed Kate Macquarie was called off. Saltwater crocodiles are protected overseas. Not so in North Queensland, where in the wake of two fatal attacks on women, armed bands have set out to rid the state of all crocodiles. And it's this indiscriminate slaughter that's worrying Environment Minister Barry Cohen. We're very concerned about the tragedy of the two women, but knee-jerk reactions by the government or our individuals to go on... Barry Cohen admits he has no power to prevent the killing of crocodiles. At the moment, the sort of wild shooting by yahoos is really the matter for the, uh, the Queensland government itself. But he can invoke Commonwealth powers to prevent the export of crocodile skins, and will do that if the uncontrolled killing continues. The Environment Minister says Canberra is ready to study an effective management plan with Queensland, but in the meantime, warns swimmers in that state to take extreme care. In the Philippines tonight, President Marcos seems set to win the official count in last week's presidential election, but opposition leader Corazon Aquino says the result is a fraud and she's calling for mass civil disruption of essential services. Marcos is polling so strongly in the official count that in his home province, for example, he has won in 137 extra precincts that simply don't exist. Where they found the other precincts, only God knows. But on government television, it was Marcos the confident statesman. And with one eye on Washington, he said he extended the hand of brotherhood to Mrs. Aquino. And I entertain no feelings of vindictiveness or revenge in my heart. In reply, Mrs Aquino repeated her call to President Marcos to step down and she told me that she was still confident of ultimate victory. Even though the President has the armed forces? Well, I have the people with me. The people turned out in their thousands for this funeral of an Aquino supporter gunned down two days ago. And amidst the bitterness and the grief, the opposition is calling for a national campaign of non-violent civil disobedience. So while Mrs Aquino prays in this church, her supporters plan to try to push up the pressure on President Marcos. And on Sunday, more pressure. A huge rally in central Manila. They're predicting about two million people at least. And a proclamation of Mrs Cory Aquino as the people's president of the Philippines. Well, coming up next in News World tonight, new fears for sex partners. And the Aussie dollar climbs upwards. Hi, on the next edition of 7pm, come behind the scenes at the making of the Channel 7 miniseries, Robbery Under Arms. Also, meet the man who holds down two jobs. They're 1,300 kilometres apart, but he does them both in the same day. And join the search for the girl who inspired the song, The Girl from Ipanema. 7pm on 7. One of the biggest natural gas fields in the world. And it's 130 kilometres straight out there. From the production platform, the gas is pumped through an underwater pipeline here to Withnall Bay. And that's where it'll be stored and liquefied, then exported. To give you an idea of the size of the project, it's three times the size of the Snowy Mountain scheme. It's as big as they come. And it's going to mean a lot to you and me. Because BHP reckon it'll earn Australia about $2,000 million a year for around 20 years. Through BHP and its partners, Australia's playing in the biggest game in the world. And I reckon we're well in front. The Northwest Shelf. Part of Australia's BHP. I 
Ira Burke are crushing the opposition. Ira Burke, do it again with used car values. At Ira Burke, you get a 126 point valid value checkup, plus a five day exchange program. And check the Easy Pay finance details too. Bigness for bargains with backup. That's the Ira Burke promise at Mount Cravat, Kedron, Cooper's Plains, Maruka, and Bowen Bridge. Take it from this winning coach. Whatever the opposition offer, Betcha Burke's can beat it. Beat it, we'll crush it. Thanks for joining us on News World tonight. In the United States, the drug interferon is being used experimentally to treat a condition rarely talked about in public. That condition is vaginal warts, which are twice as common as genital herpes. You know, you're shocked. You, you just, you know, you don't want anyone to know. You, you think you're the only one that has them. I mean, if you've never heard of many people having them, you're, it's embarrassing. It's, you're a little shy away from being intimate with someone because you don't want them to know about it. I didn't even know they were contagious at first. Rebecca Y is describing a condition few will talk about. It's called condyloma or genital warts. Small cauliflower-like growths, often too small to be seen. It is now the third most common sexually transmitted disease in this country. It is carried by as many as 40 million Americans, men and women. Many of them don't even know it. If you have genital warts, you have an increased risk for the development of cancer. Dr. Wayne Lancaster has been studying the virus that causes condylomas. He and many of his colleagues believe that virus is, in a few cases, also associated with changes in tissue that lead to cervical and genital cancers in women. The treatment involves this strong chemical, pedophilin, which should burn away the condylomas. But it doesn't always work, nor do the alternatives. And they did other means. They did um, liquid nitrogen and freezing and burning, and they kept back. But researchers have now found that adding treatment with a form of the hormone interferon is often effective, perhaps by helping the body to resist the condyloma. For some like Rebecca, it may mean an end to the problem and less risk of cancer. They were gone. It was like they were just a hole left where they were. But for millions of others, sexual contact continues to spread the disease. And for the women, that may be a risk. Uh, if you've had multiple partners, that uh, you're, at, you're at increased risk of uh, getting the infection. And once you have the infection, you're at increased risk for developing uh, cancer. Well, good news in the finance arena today. The Australian dollar passed the 70 cent mark for the first time in a few weeks. The move was a reflection of the optimism by businessmen as this month's balance of payment figures showed a slight improvement in the economy. But forecasters had predicted a deficit of around one and a half billion. Along with the government, they were relieved to see the figure below the billion mark, although not far under at $944 million. More importantly, imports were only up 4%, and seasonally adjusted, better still, fell 2%. Exports rose 15% in real terms, but broke about even when seasonally adjusted. And for the first time in seven months, we traded more merchandise than we bought, a $14 million surplus replacing a $274 million deficit. All up, that suggests the government's float of the dollar may in fact be beginning to show a result. And those strong figures caused Australian share markets to close firmer today after causing a strong demand for quality stocks. At the close of trading, the All Ordinaries Index had risen 7.1 points. Market leader BHP traded strongly and pushed through the $7 barrier. The shares closed 12 cents up. Heavyweight mining stocks firmed with CRA gaining 10 cents. On the industrial board, News Corporation improved 20 and Rothmans 40. Gold continues to fall dollar by dollar in Hong Kong. And that Australian dollar feeling proud today, sitting comfortable at 70.3 US cents. Coming up next in sport tonight, a new South African rugby ruckus and England's darting millionaires. Between Poland and Russia lie the last remaining few square miles of primeval forest where the bison and other wildlife have found a sanctuary. Saturday night, using rare archival footage, Rula Lenska documents the miraculous survival of these ancient woodlands. A BBC film crew goes behind the Iron Curtain to present The Battle of the Bison Forest, Saturday 6.30. Then we launch a brand new 1986 series of Beyond 2000 with new reporter Sharon Nash demonstrating paint that goes on underwater. Also the most deadly fighting machine ever built. In Japan, a house designed and built in just four days. 
the remote control eyes that found the Titanic, and more when AMP presents Beyond 2000, Saturday 7.30 on 7. Right now, Australia is the time to help yourself. So help yourself, Australia to the future. Earn your dreams, Australia, of what might be. Help yourself, Australia, to the green and gold. Help yourself, Australia, to be. The petrol, the water, the oil, the everything else. The convenience of BP self-serve. How you gonna clean that out of your shirts? How you gonna clean that grime and dirt? Thanks to you, Mr. Gow. Thanks to you, Mr. Gow. We look brand spanking new. You should see them be. I've boosted its performance and added a fabric softener. Right, let me know what you think. Leighton Stadiums proudly present Brisbane's lightweight champion of Australia, Dangerous Jay Martinez, when he clashes with the lightweight champ of Florida, USA, Handsome Sam the Candyman Johnson, over 10 swing the grounds at Festival Hall. It'll be no sweet battle as Handsome Sam is about to nail Dale Latanga. But the talented American, boxer puncher Candyman, will find our Australian lightweight champ no sweet pushover. With other great supporting events, it's Brisbane Boxing back with a blast. Festival Hall, Monday, 17th of February. Book now. Mine, John. Mastercard, eh? Yes, marvellous. Four million places all around the world. Is that right? All over Australia. Really? Electronic shopping. You don't say. Mm -hmm. Late night cash machines, petrol. True. Extended repayments. Cost you nothing to join. Mm. And you get up to 55 days interest free. And you get... Wait. With a Commonwealth Bank Mastercard, you get up to 55 days interest free. Oh. Mm. I think I'd better get this one, Ralph. Commonwealth. Mm. The Commonwealth Bank Mastercard. You don't even have to bank with us to get one. Let's take a look at the day's sport now, and there's a very real chance a South African rugby team will be asked to come to Sydney next month to participate in the World Seven Aside Tournament. The New South Wales Rugby Union will decide next Thursday whether or not to send an invitation to the South Africans. From a practical point of view, the Springboks are probably more trouble than they're worth. The last time they toured, it was New Zealand who played the hosts. These were the scenes outside the ground. These were the scenes inside. By anyone's standards, not a pretty sight. And they certainly weren't any prettier when the Springboks last toured these shores back in 1971 for a test series against Australia. Should the Springboks be invited, Concord Oval at Burwood would become the focal point of a major rugby union seven-a-side competition and a major controversy. The decision lies with the New South Wales Rugby Union and there's every indication the South Africans will get the nod. A number of our members have been to South Africa in the past and I think it's common knowledge they have publicly expressed uh, a pro-South African uh, position. So we'll see what happens on Thursday. From a rugby standpoint, the seven-a-side competition has plenty to offer. Australia is the unofficial world champion, having won the prestigious Hong Kong tournament four times. It's fast and exciting, but more to the point, as an international competition, the South Africans would give their right arms to be part of it. Following the withdrawal of Ireland, they were quick off the mark. Uh, it's only today that we've officially received a telex from South Africa asking us to consider an invitation, so we've not done anything in relation to security plans or whatever. So, uh, you know, we would be very much behind the eight ball if we decided to invite them. Sports Minister John Brown has thrown another spanner in the work stating the government's policy that visas would not be issued to the South African players. Therefore, the New South Wales Rugby Union can decide what it likes. Well, there's more to the world of competitive darts than smoke-filled English pubs and downing the odd pint of beer. These days, champions can make hundreds of thousands of dollars per year in prize money alone. There we go. England's John Lowe doesn't try to pass himself off as an athlete. I get up at five o'clock and jog every morning, obviously, but <laughs> no, do you want it seriously? Lowe, who is 40, classifies himself as an entertainer. He turned professional 10 years ago. For the top players in the world, like Lowe, darts can be a rewarding profession. You could return a couple hundred thousand dollars. A year? Yeah, a year. I actually made a quarter of a million dollars in two minutes, which is like winning a lottery, as those people would say. Uh, but it wasn't like that. I mean, it was, a, it was a game where a certain amount of money had been put up to record the perfect game, which means that you, nine darts is all that it can be achieved in 501. I managed to achieve that in two and a half minutes on live television in Great Britain, and the sponsor's prize was at 102,000 pounds. 
Flo has just started a world tour, which will take him to 19 countries. To help demonstrate his expertise, he likes to knock a cigarette out of the lips of any skeptics in the audience. On this night, I drew the short straw. Flo wanted a greater challenge. This time, he took aim at a shorter cigarette. I was visibly nervous. Hitting a moving target isn't easy, but it can be done if you're a pro like John Lowe. A hell of a way to give up cigarettes, isn't it? After this break, we're going to take a look at the weather for Saturday. Sunday night on a country practice, Judy's plans for a romantic evening, a ruin. All he wants is a little bit of love and affection, don't you? Who will be conned into the dangerous task of judging the pet competition? I don't suppose there's any way I can just uh, slither out of this. No. Even Cookie's entering his flea circus. <laughs> Keep that up, Ez, and I won't let you make their little uniform. <laughs> the country practice, Sunday 7.30 on 7. Your business can be more efficient with the telecom commander system. Cost estimates to build a home with a large garage. Excuse me, that's the manager's phone. Ah, somebody's taken it. With the commander system, we can answer calls from any extension. Mr. Bray's place. Just for a moment, I'll page him. Paging Mr. Brand, telephone call. John Brand. Well, they can find me anywhere with Commander's Efficient Paging System. Every business, no matter how small, can be more efficient with Telecom Commander. Okay, the countdown started, and here's 16 reasons why you should pay attention. Here's number one. Everyone's a winner, baby. Number two is coming at you now. I'm number three, four's Brother Louie, five's Emma. Hot chocolate, 16 hot ones. That's number six, and here's number seven. There's no doubt about it. Countdown 16, hot chocolate at their best. Looks like you win again. You win again. And now, as promised, the weather outlook for Saturday in the southeast corner, and we can expect a mainly fine day with a shower or two during the afternoon. Top temperature on the coast will be 28 degrees. Ipswich should have 30. Brisbane has a similar forecast to the rest of the southeast corner and can also expect a top of 28 degrees after a low of 19. That's all we have for you in News World for tonight and, in fact, for this week. Thanks for your company. Have a happy and safe weekend. Good night.